but the beauty and tranquility of the area are at risk. A proposed and poorly planned development could damage or destroy much of what makes the Loyal Sack Creek and the area so special. This plan would take 100 acres of prime farmland and floodplain and build a big box shopping mall. The local citizens form the Coalition for Responsible Growth and Resource Conservation and are working together to make sure that any development proposed in the area protects and promotes the region's environment, economy, and natural beauty. One of the things we noticed early after the developer submitted his application to our township that we noticed that the proposed uh, development was going to be built on floodplains. And our county has uh, suffered great financial and human life loss as a result of previous floods. And so we became somewhat alarmed that somebody else would try to duplicate a set of conditions which would cause us more financial loss and human life. We typically have a seven-year cycle of flooding with a, a flood of some level from moderate to severe uh, every seven years. And uh, the river that we're currently talking about that's next to the proposed shopping mall is called Loyal Sock Creek. And uh, that's a free-flowing system so that there are no uh, impo large impoundments. So every time it rains, whatever water comes down is what comes down the creek. And uh, it can just uh, flood bridges, uh, carry homes down, pick up some cows, uh, trees, uh, an occasional stove, hot water heater, a lot of stuff comes down. I, I think that the, the term creek uh, belies the fact that this is actually a kind of wild river. You can think of it as uh, white water. Yeah. Um, yes. And in fact, uh, it would probably be, if it weren't for the Lehigh River being the most popular white water area around here, um, they would be coming down our Bullisaw Creek. It's, it's a favorite place for kayakers because of the white water. People who uh, live here now live off of private wells and they don't pay anything for water. But when a water line comes in because of development, they will be forced to tie into that water line and they will be forced to pay the charges for public water despite the fact that they have a private well. Yeah. Also, there's a tax issue that is protecting the the taxpayer's uh, use of uh, his or her money. And in this case, uh, Governor Rendell has promised the developer uh, half a million dollars to widen a bridge uh, so that the two-lane Route 87, which would serve uh, the proposed Montour Crossing Shopping Center, could go to three lanes. And uh, so we're questioning the use of that half a million dollars when at the same time our county is desperate for uh, bridge rebuilding money. The, the formal name of the organization is the Coalition for Responsible Growth and, and Resource Conservation. And the reason that it is such a long and tongue-tying name is that the board decided that they wanted to make sure the name of the organization reflects the goal of the group, which is to support smart growth. That is a, a balance between the environmental and the economic aspects of any development in the area. The coalition is a little bit uh, more than a year old, but the effort on the part of local citizens to develop um, an organization to address the issues of smart growth and attack, fight this particular uh, development uh, is about a year and a half old. Lycoming County Planning Commission spent a great deal of time um, and public resources to develop a plan and start implementing a plan for a growth corridor. That, that means a, a place where sewer lines, water lines, uh, communication lines, what we're calling infrastructure, is either in place or is planned for, to be in place. And that is in the process of being developed now within the county. There is still land available for a development of the size that we are currently talking about to go along this corridor. Where the infrastructure exists and where there is no floodplain issue or other problem issues, 
the, the zoning is commercial there, and this particular developer has been encouraged to cite his place um, where the county has designated the growth corridor. Uh, that is something that our organization would like to see happen because we do not oppose this particular developer's plan for development in general. Uh, we just think that this is a poor place to put this particular development because of the flooding potential of it being on a floodplain. Right. And, and early on, we had been talking directly with the developer and had recommended to him at that time that he look not only for another site, but that we would help him uh, locate a, a more friendly site, one that didn't require so much environmental damage, and uh, uh, he just turned us down. In addition, the, the township uh, has offered the same thing and suggested to, to the developer that he go elsewhere, uh, and the county uh, planning commission met with him early on in his process and suggested that he not build on the floodplain, but rather build in the designated growth corridor. And by the way, Route 87, which is the uh, southeast entrance of the Pennsylvania Wilds, is not a growth corridor. It's not been designated by the county as a growth corridor, and therefore there are no infrastructure support elements up there. Route 87, where the development is currently planned, has been for a long time considered to be a particularly scenic road, and it is considered by many of the local residents as one of the entrances to the Pennsylvania wilds. The biggest threat to this cemetery is not flood water. The biggest threat to the cemetery and to the gateway to the Pennsylvania wilds is commercial development in this area. This area here is all zoned commercial. And uh, we would hate to see strip malls come in and surround this historic site and ruin the view going up to the Pennsylvania wilds. So we're standing very close to the loyal sock behind that row of trees, the yes. entranceway to the Pennsylvania wild, and behind us, this a beautiful barn. Tell us a little bit about that. The Scott thing. family barn was built in the 1770s by Henry Scott. He was a wealthy Quaker, Philadelphia Quaker merchant, and he built this barn. He lived here on the site, and this is where Henry and his family lived when the Indians swept down this valley, and they took shelter in that cemetery we were at a little while ago. This is a very historic barn. And this barn, the foundation of the barn, survived that fire. The foundation of the barn and the sidewall uh, survived the, uh, the burnings in 1778 and, 17, and again in 1779. And when we were behind the other side of the barn, you told me a, a little secret. Ah, yes. When they were restoring this barn in the 60s, that would be the 1960s, they found a secret chamber underneath the main floor, access only through one little slit and it turned out to be a rather large room and we believe that's where they kept runaway slaves who were working their way up from the slave states up into Pennsylvania on their way to New York up to Genesee Road. This was a stop on the Underground Railroad. Right. The oil sock winds this way and goes right up the Narrows. And this picture being Henry Scott and his family seeing the clouds of smoke as his neighbors' houses were burned to the ground by Indians knowing that they were coming this way. What a fearful time. And uh, to be smart enough to take shelter in a cemetery, knowing the Indians were superstitious, uh, saved their lives. While their house and their neighbors' homes were burned to the ground. But this is a very historic spot. Not only in American history, but in local history. Well, the first proposed development uh, is going to be no more than 200 feet from where we're standing. And sadly, history has shown that once one commercial development goes in, the others follow. And this whole area from where we're standing up to that church over a mile away is all zoned commercial. And we honestly believe that um, if steps aren't taken now to protect Pennsylvania's wilderness and its views and its heritage, this will all be lost. Half a mile that way, a mile that way will be one big strip wall. And we would hate to see that happen.